Let's now try to write a function that takes an argument that is not just a single character but a string. So in order to do that we first have to understand how strings are represented in the C programming language. So it turns out that a string in C is a null terminated array of car. Now there are a lot of technical terms here that we're not familiar with. Car at least we are familiar with. This is a special data type in C that is capable of storing individual letters. And a C string is a null terminated array of characters. So let's understand these terms one by one. Here is a simple uh, C program. It doesn't print anything. It just simply declares what looks like two strings and then it returns zero. Let's understand what these strings S1 and S2 really are. When we visualize this code on Python Tutor, before executing line 2, we will see that S1 and S2 are uninitialized. That's why you see the question marks. But you notice that the way Python Tutor is visualizing S1 and S2 is quite different. Let's first focus on S1. So we recognize car, that is for individual letters. This square bracket syntax is a little bit familiar to us from Python. We know it as the syntax for lists. But this is not a list, this is what is called an array, which is why Python Tutor is using this word. So how exactly is a C array different to a Python list? Well, it turns out there are many differences, but here are the first three most important differences you should keep in mind. So firstly, a Python list can be heterogeneous. As we have seen, the objects in that list don't have to be of the same type. In contrast, an array in C is homogeneous. So we're saying, please make an array of only characters. It can only store characters. So even though we don't yet know what characters it is going to store, Python Tutor has visualized this for us using a layout similar to lists, using indices similar to lists that are numbered starting from zero, but the items in that list are all of a known type, of type car. But their values at this point are unknown. Again, keep in mind that Python Tutor is only helping us as novices by showing us these question marks. On any real system, if you get to line two, there will be some values at that location. Those ordinal numbers will correspond to some letters, but it will probably be some nonsense or meaningless string. The question marks are just to remind us as beginners that we haven't yet ourselves put a value in those locations. Now, a Python list, as we have seen, can be automatically resized. When we append an item to a list, we have seen in Python Tutor that the list grows. There are other list methods, which I have encouraged you to explore on your own, that can shrink the list or grow it by a larger amount than a. And the length of a Python list is always accessible through the len function. In contrast, a C array either cannot be resized, or when it can be resized, we have to do a large number of manual steps. And we will actually do this when we try and demystify how Python lists actually work. Furthermore, there's no len function available in C. So you would have to then wonder, how do we know when the end of the array has been reached? That's a very good question. Keep that question in mind as we proceed through today's lecture. Lastly, we have seen that we can have negative indexing in uh, Python lists apart from the normal indexing from zero up to one less than the length. In contrast, in C, you can only do non-negative indexing.
If you actually put a negative index within square brackets, you will get some undefined behavior. It's not a syntax error, but it doesn't have the same meaning as it does in Python, where a negative index wraps around to the back of the list. But of course, there are similarities. We can say S1 square bracket 0 to refer to the first letter or the letter at index 0 in a string, just like we did in Python. And just like in Python, any item can be indexed in a fixed or constant amount of time, regardless of how long the string is.